Today, man is planning for the development of a supersonic transport, a commercial airliner that will cruise at speeds up to 2,000 miles per hour. New York to Paris in two and a half hours, Los Angeles to Washington in one and a half hours. The design and development of such an aircraft will be a milestone in aviation history, but the problems are complex and the solutions available only through exacting research. Research which has been underway at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration for several years. achieve a level of efficiency comparable to the efficiency of current jet transports, the supersonic transport must cruise above a minimum of Mach 2, twice the speed of sound, or about three times as fast as present commercial transports. What new flight problems will operation at these greatly increased speeds introduce? What changes, if any, in cockpit displays will be necessary? How much and what type of stability augmentation will be required for satisfactory control characteristics? What advances will be needed in navigational systems? In communications equipment? What constraints will be imposed by the air traffic control system on the aircraft's design and performance characteristics? In a high-speed climb-out, for example, what will be the constraints on the flight path? How critical will holding near a crowded airport be on fuel consumption? Among the most complex problems to be solved are those associated with the integration of a 2,000 mile an hour aircraft into the air traffic control system. At NASA's Langley Research Center, Langley Field, Virginia, and at the National Aviation Facilities Experimental Center, Atlantic City, New Jersey. These vital problems are under intensive study through a unique program of electronic simulation. Program planning for this study was done in the Flight Mechanics and Technology Division at the Langley Research Center. The NASA program supervisor, Mr. Richard H. Sawyer, explained. Compared to present day commercial transports, the supersonic transport will have higher performance capability, will burn more fuel, especially if operated under off-optimum conditions, and will have more constraints on its flight path because of the sonic boom it will create. Integration of this new aircraft into the existing air traffic control system designed to handle present-day aircraft is expected to create problems both for the supersonic transport and for the system. Study of these problems before actual operations begin will help to prevent costly design changes and delays. With the assistance of the Federal Aviation Agency, it was determined that the best method of studying these problems would be by linking an aircraft flight simulator representing the supersonic transport with the Federal Aviation Agency's air traffic control simulator. It was first necessary to build a complete, full-scale, four-place jet transport flight compartment, patterned after those now in use in subsonic aircraft. Equip the cockpit with working controls and pilot displays, with complete communications equipment. All crew facilities, all navigation devices, and to check all equipment for proper operation. 
It has a pilot and a crew to fly it, though it never leaves the ground. It responds to its controls, although it has no stabilizer, no elevator, no rudder. It takes off and flies, although it has no engine. It can cruise across oceans and continents, though it carries no fuel. And it maintains a split-second schedule, though it carries no passengers. It flies electronically, at the speeds and with the aerodynamic and performance characteristics of a supersonic transport. But its flights are recorded in a contrail of data instead of vapor. Analog and digital computers which are used to solve the equations of motion can be programmed to represent proposed designs of the supersonic transport including the variable geometry wing configuration and the fixed delta wing configuration. Extensive wind tunnel tests with models of the proposed configurations provided the aerodynamic characteristics that form the basis for the simulation. The performance of these airframes, when mated with suitable engines, can be studied by programming engine data into the computers. To provide the simulator with navigational information from ground-based stations, the associated equipment includes a radio aids facility. Plotters are integrated into the system to provide a record of the ground track. And recorders provide time histories of various flight parameters, such as altitude and speed. In addition to this equipment, the simulator is also equipped with a data transmission system to provide the air traffic control system with aircraft position, altitude, and transponder information. A telephone link carries these data and provides simulated radio contact between the flight crew and FAA's air traffic control simulator at Atlantic City, New Jersey. This facility, called NAFEC for short, conducts as part of its effort the Federal Aviation Agency's Air Traffic Control Research Program. Mr. Donald S. Schlotz, NAFEC's project officer for the supersonic transport program, explains. Data from the supersonic transport simulator at NASA Langley feeds into this electronic air traffic control simulator here at NAFEC. This simulator allows complex air traffic control problems to be studied in real time and with a high degree of realism. The simulator consists basically of some 108 target generators which provide representation of 108 aircraft of various types and in various stages of flight and pre-flight operation from pre-takeoff contact with the local tower continuing through terminal area control and route control and approach and landing at the destination. By linking the supersonic transport simulator at NASA Langley with the air traffic control simulator here at NAFEC, the supersonic aircraft becomes one of 108 aircraft represented as targets on the air traffic controller's radar scope. Through voice contact, the pilot of the supersonic transport simulator will request takeoff and landing instructions and will execute maneuvers on command of the air traffic controllers here, exactly as he would under actual flight conditions. In this manner, the Federal Aviation Agency will be able to realistically assess the impact of supersonic transports on air traffic control procedures and determine how these high-speed, high-performance aircraft can be integrated into the ATC system. For example, the effects of the steeper climb out of a supersonic transport on other air traffic in a congested terminal area. At the same time, the NASA will be able to determine the effects that compliance with the air traffic control system will have on the uh, design requirements, equipment requirements, and operating procedures for the supersonic transport. Many other important items such as how well the pilot can maintain a required profile and the effects of holding on fuel consumption will be studied. 
The tests will basically consist of simulated arrivals and departures of the supersonic transport in a congested metropolitan terminal area. For departure studies, the problem will be initiated with the supersonic transport awaiting takeoff. Kennedy Tower, NASA 1, taxi IFR, Paris, and we're standing by for clearance. NASA 1, this is Kennedy Tower, cleared to runway 13, wind 130 degrees at 15. ATC clears NASA 1 to Orly Airport by Kennedy 080 radial, J62, flight plan route. Cross Victor 1693, at or below 15,000. Climb and maintain flight level 600. Report leaving flight level 550. Over. Roger, NASA 1 is cleared to the Orly Airport via the Kennedy 080 degree radial, Jet 62, flight plan route. Cross Victor 1693, at or below 15,000. Climb and maintain flight level 600, report out of 550. And NASA 1's ready for departure. NASA 1 clear for takeoff, reply mode 3, code 01, contact Kennedy, departure control 121.1, when airborne over. NASA 1, roger. From the moment the pilot started the engines, the electronic computers went into action. Each movement, each adjustment of the controls as the pilot flies the simulator becomes, in effect, an input to the computers. These inputs are instantly integrated with the pre-programmed flight characteristics of the design configuration and engines being studied. The yield is electronically fed back to the pilot displays in the simulator cockpit, providing a constant readout of such flight information as altitude, speed, rate of climb, angular velocities, pitch, yaw and bank angles, fuel consumption, and so forth, exactly as the pilot would read them during an actual flight. In addition, the same information is simultaneously fed into recorders for later study and analysis. New York Center, NASA 1, leaving flight level 550. Roger, NASA 1. Report reaching flight level 600. NASA 1, we'll go. As the simulated climb out of the supersonic transport continues, the ATC controllers at NAFEC keep close watch on its progress as well as the status of all other traffic in the area. A special purpose data collection and reduction system at NAFEC continuously records all aspects of the air traffic control situation. Voice communications, problem time, all aircraft coordinates and other signals are recorded on magnetic tape. This data may then be fed back into special display consoles so that any previously recorded problem can be reproduced for subsequent study and analysis. Departure tests of the supersonic transport terminate at initial cruise altitude, 60,000 feet. For arrival tests, the problem is initiated at final cruise altitude, 70,000 feet, and terminates on final approach. Each test run in the simulator, which includes one departure and one arrival, takes about 90 minutes. Allowing for reset time, three runs can be completed in a day. Flight crews are drawn from NASA test pilots, FAA pilots, and airline personnel. FAA personnel are used for all air traffic control functions. An important aspect of the research is consultation between the simulator flight crews and the engineers concerned with establishing design criteria for the supersonic transport. Pilots are asked to pay particular attention to the performance and operational problems of the simulated aircraft and report in detail any and all difficulties or problems. Well, as I mentioned before, we had some difficulty leveling off to comply with this altitude restriction prior to 1693. Well, uh, did you have something on this? Well, you know, of course, that we are dealing here with an aircraft that has a substantially greater thrust-to-weight ratio capability than you are accustomed to with the subsonic transports. This is why the supersonic transport can climb much more steeply and can accelerate faster. 
But I do think we have a problem here. Let me demonstrate on the blackboard. In simulation tests such as these, the problems of operating the supersonic jet transport in accord with air traffic control procedures are revealed and solutions can be developed and tested so that the supersonic jet transport can eventually take its place in airline operations with little or no difficulty. Compared to the flight profiles of subsonic aircraft during takeoff and climb out, supersonic transports will have to follow even more complex profiles. Transition from subsonic to supersonic speeds is more efficient at altitudes between 20,000 and 30,000 feet, where greater excess thrust for acceleration is available. However, the sonic boom problem will require that transonic acceleration be accomplished at altitudes nearer 40,000 feet. Thus, extended subsonic operations during climb under conditions of lowering thrust may require strict adherence to a rigid flight profile for efficient fuel management. This type of rigid profile may demand a high degree of precision on the controls and thus may require additional or improved pilot displays to increase this precision. Improved displays may also be required to ease the pilot's problems in executing maneuvers ordered by ATC flight controllers. The research program with a simulator will take about two years to complete. During operations, about 175 people are involved. On the blackboard, you will see some of the items being considered in this investigation. Both variable sweep and fixed wing designs, overseas and domestic operations, airway and off-airway routings, airline and test pilots, and special and priority handling. All of these items will be studied in a mixed traffic sample, which includes other supersonic transports. These studies will be carried out starting with a simulation using present jet transport communications, navigation and display systems, and the present air traffic control system. During the program, the supersonic transport simulator communications, navigation and display systems will be updated and studied together with the air traffic control system concepts envisaged for the 1970 time period. Two years of flying in an aircraft that never leaves the ground, that leaves behind only contrails of data. But in those printed contrails lie the keys, the answers that will help speed the day when the world will shrink even smaller through the use of the supersonic jet transport.